Hi, it's Connor Svensson here, founder and CEO of Web3 Labs. This is a conversation I had with Carl Thomas. Carl is the CEO and founder of Provide. Provide is a leading enterprise blockchain whose platform could be used to quickly launch up enterprise blockchain applications. In addition, Provide have been working with Unibright and have created the Base Ledger protocol to fulfill the major requirements of enterprise organizations for participating with baseline enabled business processes. In our discussion, we covered the baseline protocol and where blockchain is gaining significant traction in enterprise. We also talked about the convergence of enterprise DeFi and what service level agreements and invoices have in common and how identity is going to be the next big thing in blockchain. Hey, Kyle, great to have you here. Hey, Connor, great to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. So let's start with some of the, you know, how you first got into blockchain, because Provide's been going for a number of years now, and it would be great to learn more about, you know, the path that took you there in the first place into founding the company, and then also learn a bit more about your journey with the company in terms of, you know, what what you started off um, trying to do versus where you are now, because obviously a lot has happened uh, in, in, in this last few years. Uh, yeah, yeah, certainly a, a loaded, loaded question. So Pro- Provide got started actually back in 2014 um, as uh, an enterprise, sort of an enterprise logistics company. We were really focused on um, Uber, sort of an Uber for enterprise approach uh, and started off, you know, um, uh, outside of blockchain. Um, however, I, I had had my eye on blockchain at that time. Um, and we had a deal, um, sort of like an eight figure deal fall through. Um, and I took a step back and I, I was sort of like, Hmm, maybe, maybe, uh, this isn't the right path for, for the company. Um, so I actually took a step back at that point cause I was, I, I was already sort of, uh, one foot in one foot out looking at blockchain. Um, and I actually took, you know, took a couple of years off of provide and sort of took, I took a step back intentionally to say, you know, what, what, uh, how can I pivot the company into, into the, the enterprise space, because, you know, the blockchain space, because there was, you know, obviously this, um, uh, this vacuum in the enterprise <laughs> blockchain space. And, um, so I took, you know, took some time I was just doing some like cyber, cyber security, uh, work, um, you know, during that time and, and really sort of refocusing on, on blockchain. Um, and there was a vacuum for a reason in the enterprise blockchain. You know, it, it, uh, it was a few years yet before, uh, before we would, we would get sort of to where we are now. Right. Uh, so I really started provide back up in, in, uh, sort of the, the latter part, the, the middle to latter part of 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that was really when it got started as provide the provide that, you know, today, yeah. uh, that's, that's focused on blockchain and, and uh, in the enterprise space. And um, uh, in late 2018, we uh, we co-organized, or we organized rather, uh, ETH Atlanta, uh, which was sort of what put us on the map. Um, we, we soft launch provide late that year. And that's what put us on the map in Atlanta, uh, you know, with, with, uh, with folks like Kona and, and really all of the, all the large right. enterprises turned out for that event. So um, that's sort of how we got our start. Yeah, nice, nice. And um, when yeah, you know, one of the classic things with blockchain is you know, people say about it being a solution looking for a problem in enterprise, and you know it has certainly and evolved was, more yeah. and more in terms of yeah you know, the different use cases and so on. And so to, to those people who do sort of have that view, where do you feel like the the real sweet spot is for the technology, and it, you know where also which is a reflection on the traction you're seeing as well with your work. Yeah, it certainly was that for some time. It felt like um, from 2017 until uh, late 2019, there was you know we we had we had built this um, you know this this sort of solution for developers. It really it really started out as like a, 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 you know or the idea at least was to make something for developers uh, in the same in the, in the same way that. that Twilio had, had given developers SMS, you know, wanted to give developers blockchain, you know, very, mm. uh, easy, easy to use, um, you know, programmatic, you know, interface for, for blockchain. And yeah. we succeeded at doing that, but it's still, you know, at that point it still felt like a, you know, a solution looking for a problem. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And then I think you know a lot of the a lot of that changed, and I, I know we have, we'll get we'll get to this, I'm sure. You know, uh, with, with baseline, um, you know, I'd, I'd really uh, what I had seen like sort of you know come the mid to latter part of 2019 was uh, the need to go sort of higher in the value chain mm-hmm. towards you know act, solving actual an actual problem versus only providing these tools for developers um, so they could go find a a solution, you know, a solution for the problem. It was really, we needed to find a solution, you know, we needed Mm -hmm. to find, we needed to find it um, because it was so early. Uh, And so that's sort of where, where the idea for shuttle came. Uh, So shuttle Mm -hmm. is is a, a, you know, a a product that we've we've been sort of envisioning uh, since, you know, mid mid twenty nineteen uh, to yep. the latter part of twenty nineteen, and what we what shuttle orig- originally was was um, uh, essentially like an orchestration tool and work group sort of work group management tool for organizations to uh, create the create sort of consortium like uh, uh, group work groups um, that you know where everyone in the work group uh, every organization that joined would get. Um, an IPFS instance and an EVM client instance deployed, mm-hmm. um, and really what that what that solution was is it was for data sharing, right? It was like sort of that the early it, it sort of it was baseline kind of before baseline, or maybe I guess baseline had started and in, in privately in UI consensus in Microsoft, but it was baseline yeah. before you know kind of before baseline became a public thing. Uh, and it really was around the use case of, of data sharing, um, and to me, that's that's a really the compelling use case um, that's foundational for you know supply chain and, and you know all these other, other all these other use cases that that are starting to crop up. Um, I think data sharing is sort of at the heart of it. Yeah, yeah, and and when you talk about data sharing, for those people who are kind of less well educated on you know why blockchain. That does fit so well because, of course, there's various cloud type you know platforms that provide these sorts of capabilities between organisations. But there's some unique properties that blockchain provides there, of course. Oh yeah, of course. Um, yeah. And so, and so, and so, for those people who are less familiar with that, what would you kind of say are those those key things? Yeah. So, so really, uh, the non repudiation um, of, of claims being a, meaning uh, organisations being being able to. Uh, receive a message from others and um, basically proof being uh, being you know able to, to prove that that you actually sent and someone actually received a message uh, or piece of data um, you know I think that's not really um, present on a lot of like the drop boxes or, the, or the, that sort of sort of, sort of solutions um, the Amazon s3 is the you know you can you can't really you can't really guarantee that an audit log is is really an uh, an audit log in on some of these solutions and so the early you know the earliest uh, incarnation of what we had built at provide uh, on top of our existing tooling like th- that that's what was cool about provide as well is we we actually built on top of what we had built for developers we actually built using sort of the Amazon the Amazon approach there we sort of used yeah. used our own you know dog fitted our own our own platform and, and the, so the tooling continued to mature as we as we built shuttle on top of it in you know in late 2019 uh, and yeah I think that the uh, the strongest the strongest thing about all of it was uh, the non repudiation of claims but also doing so in a way that preserved the some level of privacy like the degree of privacy that you wanted to keep like you could um, you didn't have to share the entire you know the entire uh, the entire bit, the, the entire binary data, you, you know, you could just share uh, uh, just some representation of it, like a hash or, so, 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 you know, something, something to that effect. That way uh, you could, you could distribute the, the actual data to only certain parties um, in, in the work group. Uh, and again, that's very like baseline-esque, I think, uh, in, in sort of our, our approach. Yeah. And with baseline, obviously you've mentioned it a, a few times already. And you know, how, how did baseline slot into this? Because you said that the work you were doing earlier on with shuttle and you know IPFS and uh, 
um, ha having the EVM in there, there's you know, it, it was kind of like so well aligned with this. And so when Baseline came along, there was just like this really good synergy for you, right? Yeah, it, it was it was uh, it, it was funny because I so I had been I'd had a few conversations with with John Wilpert, uh, I guess in mid 2019 or toward you know towards towards the the latter part of 2019. And uh, mm -hmm. I, sh I had shown him shuttle, and he was like, "Oh yeah, you gotta be, you know, you gotta be a part of baseline." Uh, and and so I, I joined the EEA uh, main networking and the main networking group um, uh, as a result of those conversations with John. Uh, and I think that um, you know, it's sort of the rest of <laughs> the rest is sort of history. The way that developed, uh, you know, we we joined the TSC as a result of, of those early conversations, and um, it was just a good fit from the start. Uh, it was, it's yeah it just resembled resembled the pattern where, where we sit today uh, you know very very early stages we, like we didn't have uh, the, like a privacy service or anything at that point uh, for ZK you know ZK snarks or anything yet but um, that's sort of what we built over the you know in over the course of 2020 to add to the that existing yeah. architecture and 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 so in in effect what you did baseline came along and it was kind of you know what was there was more like a proof of concept that had been done you know for a specific use case and you came in and uh, you I guess well brought it in to provide but kind of made it more of a kind of service rather than it being like here's a very specific use case and you just sort of opened it up and enabled uh, people to be able to deploy deploy that sort of architecture more readily. Yeah I think right? that's a good a good characterization um, speaking about like Radish 34 uh, it, yeah, that, that yeah. certainly uh, was the POC uh, that that EY consensus Microsoft had had, uh, had incubated and, and released as open source. Um, and yeah, it wasn't um, it wasn't really reusable. You know, it was it was a good POC. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was looking at it and saying, hmm, this looks a lot like provide in our architecture uh, for shuttle. Um, how can we you know make this more scalable? Um, and make it easier for developers to build build stuff, and you know, using this new pattern because you know I think we're onto something here. Yeah, and and, and you and you went uh, truly down the rabbit hole <laughs> like with the code there, right? You were just uh, you, you know, busy busy there for a while doing all sorts of refactorings and yeah. just repurposing it, so it was just more accessible. It, you kind of have you been able to step away a little bit, or is it still uh, you know you're still finding yourself getting pulled so we're, in? So we do, I would say it's we we deprecated the Radish thirty four bits. Um, you know, just we learned a lot from it. Certainly, um, we we yeah, we yeah. created a new service, a new privacy service to add to the stack, uh, and we added like Kubernetes support and um, you know hardened hardened the existing stack a bit but then then really um, really made use of some of those existing components like like nats and, and our contributions to the, to the nats ecosystem uh, and those those bits are still there today uh, I, I do still find myself just sort of crawling out of the rabbit hole uh, just to get yeah. pulled back in here a little bit there here and there um, but yeah the, the team is really uh, has really grown a bit, you know, since, you know, since early, the early 2020 and, you know, since baseline, uh, since we joined the baseline community, uh, the team has grown a bit. So that's, that's it's certainly been helpful, but, um, yeah, I still find myself enjoying some of the, some of the privacy, uh, some of the privacy code and, um, yeah, really hardening it up. But yeah. I still, I still get in there sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It, it. it is fun, but then you suddenly look up and you realise like the whole day's <laughs> gone by, and there are some other things uh, you're trying yeah, to work on. Yeah, uh, yeah that's yeah. And that's, so, why so there's the, that's why there's the night, sorry. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and and I mean, baseline itself, like you know, of course, it was uh, early early on. It was a collaboration with EY Consensus and Microsoft. You know, um, Provide got very involved, but then there's a number of other organisations that you're working with as well. Um, you know, on on this stuff too. Obviously, yeah, Unibright, Nethermind, and some mm -hmm. others there. Um, certainly, Unibright's like uh, you've got a very close relationship with the team there, and um, you know, how, how do they kind of fit into yeah, all this? Yes, so, so that was one thing that. Um, that I was very pleasantly surprised to find, uh, you know, when we joined the EEA and, and also the baseline community was, um, yeah, what well, was Unibride and, and just how, uh, cause they're really focused, they, you know, they have 
decades of experience on the enterprise integration side, mm-hmm. um, namely with you know with SAP yeah. and, and that you know that pattern. You know, if you if, if you have a really strong integrator, um, you know the pattern for SAP integration will good tip will take you far. Um, you know, when you talk about the context of other uh, of other traditional systems of record like Dynamics and you know others, you know even all the way to like Excel, like you're, when you the difference between an SAP and an Excel integration is quite quite large. Um, but but like at the SAP on the SAP side, you know it's it's much uh, it's much needed to have that that sort of trusted partner and. Uh, because of their decades long experience in that space uh, and also their their vision their shared vision for like l- low code or you know even no code on uh, enterprise blockchain integration um, it, it was very well aligned and, and um, you know they had this uh, uh, this token like they, they were actually uh, an issuer of you know a, a UB, the issuer of UBT which which really um, uh, and, and they, they did it in the right way. Like they're, they're a team that, that stood behind what they had, had done with UBT and, the, and the, they stood behind, you know, their decision there and then the community. Uh, and they wanted to do something, you know, much bigger with, with UBT. Um, and so it was, it was a yep. great synergy and opportunity there, um, you know, one on the, on the enterprise integration side. Um, and two on the UBT side. So, um, you know, we sort of uh, we, we sort of acquired a, a bit of their of the Unibright technology stack um, in in late 2020. Mm-hmm. When we announced that partnership, you know, providing Unibright sort of became um, you know this one uh, one message and one one sort of uh, commercial focus on, when it comes to the, the blockchain and the, inter- the baselining side, um, uh, and, and that's that's seems to have been the right move. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing well with Unibright and, and uh, yeah, great to see the, the community work together uh, in, in such ways. Uh, it's kind of magical. Yeah. And the, the base ledger technologies, is that something that you're working on with Unibright or is that? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's absolutely right? something that we're working on together uh, with them. Yeah. Uh, so, so base ledger is, um, yeah, this this new this new network um, that folks are getting sort of getting behind. Uh, it seems like, um, and the idea for Base Ledger uh, was to create this sort of uh, layer one, layer two uh, interoperability uh, for you know for the, in the context of baseline, um, and also while also adding um, UBT as a, uh, a sort of a gas token for uh, you know this network. Um, yeah, so so we're working very closely with Unibright to um, launch the initial test net uh, for for Base Ledger. Uh, I think it looks a lot like the Provide Stack, to be honest. Um, I think it looks a lot like the Provide Stack with a Tendermint consensus sort of underneath it, uh, which means um, sort of translated. You know, <laughs> it's a really good opportunity for Provide to open source. Um, Sort of the core, some of the core bits of the stack at this point, um, with with the base ledger mm-hmm. test that release uh, here pretty soon. So I, we're looking at um, open sourcing the ident in chain uh, uh, vault and privacy services um, alongside this uh, this release. So it's pretty exciting. So how how does base ledger kind of fit fit in with with baseline? You said about connecting layer one and layer two. Of course, with layer one would be like a public Ethereum network, and you know, um, baseline provides you know, an integration, as you said earlier, for like system of records between different organizations where they they use the Ethereum network as that kind of source of truth for uh, information that's being exchanged, albeit in a secure uh, way, so that the you know specifics of what's being exchanged aren't. You Know, publicly uh, visible to anyone you know looking at the the ethereum network mm-hmm. yeah so if you look at the the way pro- the provide stack is used by by our or, you know early adopters um it sort of sits at, at the edge um like really close to the erp system um yeah like it runs on the same network for example uh and so to that extent it's already this distributed system where you've got um, you were, provide does run like you know it's its own uh, um, its own hosted environment, uh, but then every organization also runs their own hosted environment. Um, and so, so you know, for example, Kona 
provides in their own fully standalone hosted environment for the bottlers. Mm -hmm. And so each bottler yeah. then connects to that environment. Um, and so if you think about it, if you think about it like this, um, uh, and, and all and all those bottlers also share an SAP system also provided by Kona. So the provide yeah. stack sits very close to the edge if you consider each organization the edge of the network. And um, to that extent, uh, you know, the you know the, the base base ledger. It, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of privacy like there's a lot of proofs that are generated in in a, in a baseline workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, each each workflow has work steps. Each work step can generate, you know, you know a proof, and in many cases more than one, depending on yeah. um, the organizations as they as they're proposing new states for the network. Um, all of these proofs can be written to base ledger uh, because you don't want to write all of these proofs to the Ethereum mainnet because it's you know that yeah. would just that would add you know to add to the, the to the cost and and complexity and the and clog the network up even further. Uh, Etc. And so you can write these proofs to base ledger. And so as a workflow, as a workflow reaches finality or exits, um, like when you like when you let's say you have a five step workflow, like procure to pay workflow, um, you know you have a, a, a PO, an SO, a shipment notification, goods receipt, and an invoice. That invoice sort of uh, that is the exit, right? When that invoice is cut, like the, the workflow is over. Yeah. And you can have many, you know, tens or tens or hundreds of thousands of these, um, you know, in a year, uh, you know, if you're if you're a large organization. Um, and so each one of those workflows, when it exits, um, we can then take the result. Uh, each one of those proofs, of course, have, having be, being written, having been written to by way of provide privacy to base ledger, uh, we can mm -hmm. we can then exit those into. Um, some layer two, for example, like we could we could at that point decide, oh, this is this makes a lot of sense to um, to use a state channel or or uh, you know optimism or some some you know layer two EVM comp uh, compatible layer two, and start to roll these these uh, these these proofs up um, in that layer. So we could basically we basically have like the the um, the, the raw the raw workflow exit proofs and then we have on layer two um, sort of the zk rollup uh, of that and then once once that zk rollup reaches a certain volume uh, or time limit time limit we call it a million dollars or um, you know 15 days or a month whatever we, can, we yeah. can then exit from that layer two onto layer one so then so we have a zk so we have on base ledger just the, the proof the proofs all of them um, the ZK rollup proofs on layer two, and then the ZK ZK rollup proofs uh, go to layer one. So um, that's sort of how base ledger facilitates and, and fit, you know fits into the I think the whole the whole process. Hopefully that made sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in in, in effect, it's um, you know it, it, it provides a mechanism for people to more rapidly, of course, you know exchange information, but also make additional information available to other participants on the network that you wouldn't necessarily want to share with um, the, the the what the whole of uh, the ethereum network uh yeah and it's not that it's not that the, it's the data that you wouldn't want to share um it's it's the you know it's just that you wouldn't want to write that data to the ethereum network yeah um like it's it's basically uh it's maybe this is a bit of a dirty word but it's a public permission chain that uses ubt for gas uh, and it, it just is it, it operates just the way the provide stack does today, except it writes all the data that gets written by provide pri by our privacy service um, and shared with the participants on the, uh, you know in the work groups um, and it, that are privy to that data privy to the off chain and on chain data in you know in workflows in those work groups. Um, all that data those proofs rather um, get written to this public permission chain. Um, yeah. that's that's. Uh, that's underpinned by tender yeah. consensus. But yes, as I said, a, a key property generally of um, baseline is, is that fact that it's always proofs that are being written to the change rather than you know the actual uh, raw, raw data itself, which um, satisfies those needs of enterprise. Right, yeah. and it's not just and it's not hashes either. You know, it's a, that is a good point. It's not and it's not just the hashes either. It's the it's actual it's actual proofs, um, which is is also I think a key key differentiator uh, between that and um, sort of the 
sort of the, the proof of existence that we started out. So shuttle started out as like sort of turnkey proof of existence um, back in 2019. And it turned into turnkey, uh, you know, yeah, pr proof, yeah, ZK, ZK snarks, turnkey, Z, turnkey ZK snarks mm -hmm. at the end at this point. Um, so you've, you've mentioned the yeah. uh, you know the fact you're working with Coda is is that work still ongoing or where, where have you kind of got to with it because um, yeah it's, it's a very high profile client and um, you know it's it's obviously a, a very a, a great use case as well for um, you know baseline and also pro the, the provide stack uh, but yeah how how far along are you with with the work yeah it's it's gotten pretty pretty far along i think uh we're looking we're targeting september uh of this year for like uh for production production um uh, so we're like we're we're, we're de we've, we've deployed this to kona and it's running um it's it's running currently and um um we're targeting a september release and that's we're we're, we're pretty close with a, our partner can circle um on getting that getting their their solution for their sap uh, connector if you will um and this was also by way of the unibright sap connector um getting that solution certified um and what that is is, is a uh something that we've developed with them um specifically for uh automating the configuration of multi-tenant sap environments uh for baselining um and so that that solution is you know obviously most, if not all, enterprises require um, SAP certification uh, for running anything in in production production with real money, um, and so that's where we're we've been working and testing uh, with with uh, uh, the second largest bottler uh, in the United States um, in North America rather, uh, and that's United Bottling. Um, we've been working on uh, you know in in a production like a copy of production sort of environment. Um, but in September, uh, I, th I think we'll see, you know, as early as the, in the end of July, we'll see that that can circle um, uh, UBC uh, plugin um, uh, certified by SAP. And then I think we'll see in September, I think we'll see um, the first the first invoice, the first real money invoices handled. Uh, yeah, that would that be an awesome milestone. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, for sure. And so, outside of the the work and supply chain, are there other sort of areas that you're seeing like big interest um, in in this kind of well, the, the technology here? Yeah. So, absolutely. Um, we're looking at at uh, you know, so ServiceNow. I think we we demoed ServiceNow a few months ago on on one of the office hours, uh, baseline office hours. That use case is is really interesting because ServiceNow is is. I, I think the, I think they're the fastest growing company. I don't know. They're they're like one of the the fastest growing companies um, in the world, I, I believe. Um, that's a pretty bold statement, um, but I, I think that's true. Um, at any rate, they're they're uh, you know they're they're a very rapidly growing company that has taken that took interest in the work and the technology. Um, their CEO is a, a former, for the former CEO of, of SAP, I believe. And, uh, so that's, it's an interesting, that's an interesting synergy. Um, the use case that we're really, really interested in is, um, uh, incident starting off with incident management. Cause it's really, you usually have a lot of, a lot of organization, a lot of different parties involved in, um, in incident management. Like so there'll be some vendor that deploys, there'll be a customer, obviously. There'll be a, a vendor that that sells a solution, and then there'll be some other organization that's responsible for maintaining it or, or you know making sure that mm -hmm. that, that things run smoothly yeah. in production, for example. Um, and so you'll have a lot of incidents uh, that happen, and I know many organizations that have this issue. These incidents will happen, and someone will like look at their phone. It'll be like three in the morning, and they'll be like no, no yeah. thanks and they'll like turn it off right they'll like snooze the they'll like snooze the alarm or whatever and they won't they won't actually they'll just like dismiss the incident uh and that's a problem because the, yeah, yeah. it doesn't get looked at doesn't get doesn't get resolved um and so i think that there's a you know pretty huge opportunity to apply the technology to in that in that sense uh, uh to enforce like for example sla uh sla mm -hmm. um, compliance um, and so we're looking at, at how, um, and so incident management is the first step and then the SLA compliance part is, a, is the second 
bit. And if you look at that together, um, and you look at what sort of what an SLA typically represents, it, it sort of comes full circle back to yeah. an invoice, right? So like if you look at an SLA, you could say, oh, well, this is not this is just an invoice waiting to happen every yeah, yeah. 30 day, fill in the blank on the time period, right? Um, and so I think that's another interesting one that can lead us down the path of enterprise DeFi. Uh, and I think that's, you know, kind of what we're, what we're looking at uh, in the context of service now. And then there's some, some pretty large banks that are, um, that have gotten excited about, about that and uh, who are, you know, actively um, checking in and, and like looking into this, uh, this, the, the tech in that context as we, mm. as we build that out the service now. So yeah, that's, yeah, definitely. That's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, those are, those are sort of the two areas that we're most focused on, I think. Um, you know, in terms of uh, um, this, yeah, the supply chain, the procure to pay model, and, and also the, the SLA uh, incident re response model. But then there's also just gene like general enablement. Um, you know, other organizations um, that are you know that are large that want to that want to get into this space. All, you know, they want to they want they the, the the tool the market for tooling is still very much a real mm. a real part of it yeah, too. Yeah. And you mentioned there about. Uh, um, with S SLAs and uh, you know, almost an angle for enterprise DeFi, and um, you know, what, what's kind of your your take on um, you know where, where we are in terms of this this convergence of some of uh, you know what what's been happening in DeFi and uh, enterprises kind of taking taking note of opportunities there. And at one extreme, you've of course got the the financial speculation and the you know the crazy returns that people are getting, uh, but then you've also seen things like you know hmm. are they one of the leading um, uh, DeFi lenders are actually opening up their their lending pools to uh, enterprises with KYC and so on. And so, of course, when we're talk coming at it from um, you know, th things like you know, the technologies like ServiceNow and you know supply chain and systems of record, it is a different sort of angle there, and there are different types of use case. But at the same time, like you know, what's kind of your take on you know how how there's you know the opportunities for convergence with you know some of the DeFi stuff and uh, what you're seeing in enterprise. Well, I think DeFi, you know, the DeFi space has been very, very small compared to what it will be when you see, when you have all these, these really large corporations, um, you know, adding, adding all that volume and liquidity uh, into DeFi. Um, I think it's just a matter of time. Um, you know, I, there, there's going to be some, you know, some success stories that, that are measured that come, that, that are reported on that, um, you know, that really... I think tip the, you know, tip the scales, if you will, or like, you know, tip the balance of, of, uh, uh, of like the risk mm -hmm. appetites, I guess, in the, in the enterprise space to be like, okay, this isn't, this isn't some like, uh, some Ponzi yeah. scheme, <laughs> you know, like the, like not to say that not to class it, categorize DeFi as a whole as that already, but you know, that's, that's, there's perceptions, right. Um, and there's, there's, uh, people, people don't want to lose their jobs. So they, they just stay, play it safe, but, once there's, um, you know, once there's some some tried and true uh, measured results, I mean, they're going to jump in uh, because it's it's it makes a lot of sense. Right. I, I think there's um, you can look at this opportunity, um, you know, sort of as like a, a, a turning point in uh, in this, you know, in the whole in the world, really, for like financial inclusivity. Um, you know, I think that and I think a rising tide sort of. Uh, raises all all boats in that sense because you know what what I think is um, these organizations uh, and, and the opportunities especially in like the procure to pay side is for you know providing you know instant payment for invoices and you know I think that that, that creates a, a better quality of life for a lot of people uh, and even the smaller players most importantly the smaller players. Um, in you know in, in supply chains um so like you know the the, the very small you know raw materials provider it, you know can get paid a lot faster um and so that you know there's a lot like you could they can they can make sure their that their families have food on the table um instead of waiting waiting for waiting to get paid um you know and it's it seems like 
I mean, I mean that that's a really really uh, like really great opportunity and, and a byproduct of what this movement I think will will sort of result in um, you know in, in the sense of um, bringing bringing like much greater financial inclusivity uh, you know to, to the, even the smaller players. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge, huge point that as well, just that that general inclusivity, but also as you say, like if you if you could almost uh, the, the whole you know invoice finance and factoring process, if you could actually take advantage of some of the innovations in DeFi and start to um, you know um, pr provide it in, in those contexts, then. That's going to help so many people and companies. It's, you know, so as you know, you must have found too. Like especially when the company was small, you, you live and die a bit on you know some of your invoice terms. And if someone's going to you know they're not going to pay you when they say they are, that can be a real problem for making payroll and these sorts of things. So it's uh, yeah, it touches so exactly, many people. Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah. So and we're you know we've been working on. Um, Sort of a baseline work work group or work you know workflows um, where provide is is privy to these work you know to these workflows uh, and and for example Kona uh, and, and really like even in, in the SLA when it's generalized we we've been able to generalize that to the you know to for use there too and what what that that workflow what these workflows are is essentially uh, the the proof of the of the invoice um, and and but not the the full invoice data so pr while protecting like the company's data and the, the company's invoice data um and we, we can essentially using provide payments which is another one of our, our properties that we we've, we've had this vision for for some mm -hmm. number of years um you know really uh uh pass through uh in the in terms of use, the user experience pass through um to to some third party financial facility um, for to provide credit decisions on the buyers, and then essentially baseline the credit decision, and then for all the invoices that come out of that process, uh, for example, like a bottler has it gets a credit decision, um, the proof of that decision alongside all the invoices that the suppliers opt into having paid immediately, all of those invoices can ha be proven um, against the credit decision, and um, we can essentially provide a stream of those invoices to DeFi uh, without actually sharing the, the raw invoice data. Um, so that means we can scale the DeFi, the DeFi offering that we that we want really want to enable. We're actually enabling it, right? We don't want to um, provide the financing or anything like that. Um, we, we just want to enable the tokenization so that some other party or parties can mm -hmm. provide the financing. Um, and so there's you know, a number of great conversations that we're having um and we have some liquidity that's been offered um to actually to actually buy the buy those in that invoice stream um so i think you know this year we'll see real money invoices um be financed in DeFi, uh which is which is good. yeah yeah it's a good really really good progress because i think that's that's what's going to be needed for um you know like there's going to need to be that story and the, the the measured results that come from that i think uh in order to um enable the broader ecosystem and sort of quell any, um, you know, any, any fears about, about jumping in for, for, for C, C, CFOs uh, to really wrap their hands and, and heads around how this works. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, 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 that's definitely a huge one. And um, going back onto the workflow topic, uh, um, you, you've, you've also got a, a low code um, component to the platform as well. And I know previously when you spoke about it, it was um, you, it was due for launch. Has it, has it launched now? Or are you still working on it? So we, we haven't launched it. What we've done, so we, we've we've given a preview, uh, a pretty a pretty good. It's it was pretty far along some months ago um, when we, pre, we we demoed it. Uh, it's it's still called Shuttle, um, and yeah, it's it's a workflow designer that lets you um, it lets sort of the ecosystem. It's really for ecosystem operators. Yeah. Um, it's for if it's for operators that want to um, define the workflows and also invite the participants into a baseline sort of the baseline their baseline ecosystem, um, and so you know Kona is, is the is the initial sort of the the case uh, that we use to build you know to really build that mm -hmm. out, um, and yeah it allows it allows the no code sort of the drag and drop no code design um, of of uh, an arbitrarily long or you know or, or short workflow yeah. 
uh, and then it, it makes sure that all the participants um, that join the the join you know have all the artifacts. I mean that's what the protocol does today. Um, <clears throat> and so shuttle, uh, we've act, we actually have, have brought in uh, uh, this really incredible uh, boutique uh, design shop, um, and we've we're, we've actually invested quite a bit of, of money uh, in in this this relationship to make shuttle. Um, like the the best uh, user experience that you could possibly find in in the blockchain space yeah. for enterprise, I think, um, in terms of you know in terms of this sort of ecosystem design and operation, um, and yeah that that's it's it's we pushed the launch date back because of this we, we engaged this third party uh, to sort of to come in and really and really help us design mm -hmm. it. Um, we we sort of we took what we had built and we. Uh, we didn't throw it away. Uh, it, it was quite, it was quite robust, you know, some months ago when we when we showed it off. But we've we've really been focusing on um, just making sure that the UX is is completely uh, completely thought through and designed yeah. uh, from the ground up, just to make sure that it that it, it you know it's it's the the most beautiful product that we can that we can put to mark but you know bring to market. Um, yeah, I think that we're we're probably about two months out from from launching it. Yeah, nice, nice. That's 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 awesome to see, and uh, look look forward to it, to it being out there. Um, yeah, I can't wait to can't wait for it to, to to come out. So so outside of like um, you know what we've discussed so far, um, what what are kind of um, you know if, if we move away from enterprise, what 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 are you are you interested in apart from that side of things in blockchain? I mean, of course, NFTs can be a little bit divisive, but um, yeah, <laughs> in, in terms of like the the bigger picture and um, you know what what. I guess what you're most excited about, um, you know, what, what would you say that is? Uh, I would say it's identity. Um, you know, I, I, and that's a, a pretty, a pretty generic, uh, answer, but yeah, you know, I think it, I think in, in the context of, of like, um, being able to prove stuff, right. Which is really what baseline is all about. Mm -hmm. it's about being able to prove things without sharing certain, you know, without sharing data. Um, I think there's a lot of, a lot that needs to happen, uh, you know the, the the fangs of the world have really created a lot of a lot of pressure. I think yeah. on uh, on you know in the, on this space to uh, to innovate and create um, you know identity solutions for consumers. Uh, you know to really you know take back control of their of their privacy yeah. um, when it comes to advertising and, and just general like you know Alexa is like listening to us right now probably. Yeah. Um, you know so I, I think there's from the consumer side I think that's really very important um there's there's stuff out there today like global id and some other other interesting projects um you know that that are this sort of ledger based uh um you know giving you the ability to to prove certain uh, characteristics about who you are to prove that you are who you are whether that's by way of like you know proof of phone number or address or whatever that might may be you know um and I, you know, I think that's really interesting uh, when it comes to baselining, you know, to sort of connect the dots here, um, because then, you, you know, in the future, you, you could you could see a world where, you know, consumers are incentivized by brands to uh, to still participate, but in a much more organic way um, mm -hmm. yeah. when, when you leverage uh, leverage tools that, that give the consumer back their some control over over their data. So I think that's that's most exciting because it's it's such an important uh it's it's so needed right now yeah yeah absolutely and, and, it, and it's just it, it's such a hard problem as well and it's going to take time because so many enterprises are investing heavily in this space but it's it's going to take a while yeah, before we see the fruits will. of that labor exactly yeah yeah that's true yeah, also, so one step at a time though right like yeah the, the enterprise is still pretty pretty much the focus um but yeah i would say i would say there's there's uh there's other opportunities uh, in the future around around identity that would be interesting. Yeah, but uh, but also too, I think it's fascinating. You know, as you, you you draw the the parallels there with the work you're already doing though with with baselining, um, and that it does kind of apl apply there too, because as with the digital, I, I with the de decentralized identities, I mean, ultimately there is some sort of proof that they're referring to of you know a document or whatever else um, that you know verifies a claim that's being made uh, on on the actual mm -hmm. identity there, and so. Yeah, there's, there's that nice yeah. kind of uh, alignment. Yeah, you can you can draw the you can draw the, make the connection. You can connect the dots a bit. Well, it's interesting though when you have like, you know, your, your the idea of self sovereign identity 
but then you've got to prove somehow that you, that is your driver's license number, which is <laughs> which is not yours. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. your fo- your phone you number pro- else. proof of phone number is still not your. It's not yours, um, but there's still some way to uh, disconnect um, just blindly sharing your digits. You know. Which yeah. is still a, a you know a good step forward, and if you do it with enough things, you know, then you, if you can parlay that together with a few different things, um, you know, you can really prove whether someone is them is who they say they are or not without sharing the data. It's definitely a possible thing to do today um, with the tech that it, that exists that we have, you know, that we've even implemented. Um, you know, so it's just a matter of. Um, Getting the fangs of the world to, <laughs> to so, yeah, to, to throw away it. all this data they already have and uh, embrace yeah. the decentralization. Yeah. yeah, cool, cool. Well, um, Carl, if um, if if people want to keep abreast of you know what you're working on and what provides doing, what well, what are the best ways for them to yeah, you know, keep up with everything? Yeah, I mean, I think the the baseline office hours is still a pretty pretty solid way. It's uh, Wednesdays, uh, I believe it's at noon. Uh, every Wednesday, uh, we we present you know something probably once a month or once or twice a month. Um, uh, you can you can follow us on Twitter. It's at Provide Platform. Uh, you can follow me. It's it's at Kyle BT on Twitter as well. Um, yeah, I'd say those are probably the your best bets. Um, and yeah, our typically like we're we're, uh, we're we're sort of trending toward that that you know that I guess the ethos that that Ethereum. Um, community is sort of always uh, exuded, um, which is you know just inclusivity and, and openness. So you know mm-hmm. if you if you reach out to myself or, or you know someone at Provide, um, yeah, you'll you'll get a response. Awesome. Well, Carl, it's, it's been fantastic uh, having you here, and uh, I, I look forward to continuing to see uh, you going from strength to strength and more more stories about uh, these these big uh, enterprises embracing uh, Provide too. Connor, thanks for having me today. It's been it's been fun catching up. Cheers. We'll speak soon. Cheers.